increasing transparency into non-profit operations, advances in technology, and changing attitudes towards wealth continue to shape the way individuals approach their giving. Time, money, food, experience, skills or talent to help create a better world are some of the things that can be given, especially to the less fortunate in the society. And this heroic act, therefore, can be done by anyone regardless of status or net worth. There is a new hero in town whose name is stuck in the hearts and mouths of city dwellers, both old and young, sing his praise of his exceptional love. Hero's song lures my interest into a temple tucked in the heart of Parklands. Ushered in, the I am lead to my person of interest. Born and raised in Kenya, Pankaj Shah, a safari rally operator, embarked on a mission to distribute food hampers and other essentials to the most vulnerable members of the community. Around the 21st of March, I decided that because our business is closed and I saw that uh, people in the slums are having difficulty uh, in getting food because a lot of people already lost their jobs way back in March, we started a small, in a small way to start feeding a few families in the slums. Pankad leads me to the temple's basement and it is a beehive of activities. Quite honestly, I did not expect to see this magnitude of operations. The success of Shah's goodwill is as a result of the support he gets from the community, especially the Indian community and many other donors, he reveals to me. We started with Huruma Slum, with Mother Teresa's home, where we have been working since uh, the 21st of March. Today we are 60 days old, as you can see. And then we said we, we had, I had a lot of focus on this. I had a lot of um, support from the community, especially the Indian community of Kenya. And uh, so you can see we have grown very, very big. Today we are doing about 2,500 bags a day of food. Working closely with him are the volunteers termed Tim Pankaj, who help in packaging and distribution of the hampers. Each hamper contains enough food to last a family of at least four people for a period of 14 days. In a pack, we put a balanced diet, which we have talked about to the Food and Agricultural Organization and the World Food Program. They have four kilos, we have four kilos of unga, four, two kilos of chapati flour, two kilos of mandazi flour. We have four kilos of beans, which are very good protein. We have sugar and rice for energy. We have some tea for early mornings. We give fresh bread to the areas. We have hot chocolate for children. Uh, we put in good quality binzari to put in the beans, and it's very good for the throat. We put in salt, um, and the whole package uh, goes together. Uh, we put in sanitary towels also for ladies. Whole package is gone together. It weighs about 16 kilos each. You've seen so many down there. They weigh about 16 kilos each, and they go to a family. It should last a family of four for about 14 days because they are still able to supplement a little bit of vegetables which they can buy locally. When we do have vegetables, like when we get vegetables today, we are going to get 3,000 cabbage. We'll take 3,000 cabbage to a slum, and our volunteers will hold the truck there. They'll make people, we put spray on people's finger and give one one cabbage to everybody. Like you go for voting, unfortunately we have to do this for food, but we put a little bit of spray and anybody who comes without the sprayed finger will get a cabbage. So today we are going to do that in Matari, tomorrow we'll do that in Kibra. So 3,000 cabbage we will give, uh, I think this, this week we'll give about 9,000 cabbage. Pankaj, whose philanthropic action was triggered by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, but he reminds me that this is not where it all began. He recalls of how he accidentally met Mother Teresa some years back in Nairobi and how this encounter changed his entire life. I've been affiliated to Mother Teresa's home since 1989 when I first met Mother Teresa herself in Kenya. Um, and I met her by accident, a real accident. One of the wheels of their car came out and hit my new car and that's how I met her. But my car wasn't damaged. So I took her to her home in Huruma. That was the first home that they had in Kenya. I took her to the home in Huruma, and that's how I started. And then in 1989, I went to work in Calcutta with her for three months. Uh, and that's when I uh, got this humbling experience of life. I've been supporting the Nairobi home for a long time. My 
eldest daughter is adopted from her home in India. She's right now, she lived in, uh, she was born in Nagpur, she lived in Nairobi, she did her schooling in Nairobi and now she's in New York studying uh, drama and uh, silver screen acting and singing. With a well-versed knowledge of the shanties which are his target areas and good mapping, Pankaj and his team are assured of a smooth operation. We have full maps of slums so we know exactly which area we are going to. Um, so we cover one area, we don't go back there. We cover another area, we don't go back there for 14, 14 days. And after 14 days, we'll go back to the people. So this is the map that we are using. Uh, this is the map of Kayole slum. Or this is the map of Madare slum. Um, and uh, you see all the yellow places are covered. They have been done by us. So this place is remaining. These places are going to be done today. And within two or three days, we'll have sorted out the whole of Matare. Um, so every home in Matare will have received a parcel from us of food, wherever we, we are going in. So we are doing it very, very professionally, very, very nicely, and we are very, very fair. Whether you believe in religion, whether you are a Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Shia, Sunni, we are completely secular, everybody gets for food. We don't deny anybody of food because of religion, color, caste, creed, tribe, nothing. Everybody gets food. This is our motto and our policy. Whether you are coming from Turkana or whether you are coming from uh, Kisumu or Siaya or whether you are coming from Ukambani, we give food to everybody. No caste, no creed, everything. So you see we are doing uh, everything that we are doing. We are marking so that we know what we are going to do even tomorrow. We go from door to door. The most vulnerable ones, we put a red sticker on their door. So Shosho, Babu, um, single mothers with children, People who are disabled, they get a red sticker on their door, they get the food first. Then the second is yellow stickers. These are mothers who, have, uh, um, who may be alone or uh, a small family who don't have a job, they will get. And then whoever has a job, we give them food last. So those people who get food late. And this, are, this is the reason why some of these people, places, like this is very near Isli. So these people had, had a job, now they don't have a job. So they are going to get co covered this week. As we continue with our conversation, Pankaj tries to paint a clear picture of the typical families residing in these shanties. Matari is very near Isli, and Isli is the heart of business in Nairobi. Until the lockdown, the people of Matari have been having a little bit of job to do. They've got a little bit of... Because of all the Somalis living in Isli, the women were able to go and wash clothes for the Somalis, keep their homes clean and stuff. Now that has stopped, so Matari is now facing a lot of trouble. Um, take Kwa Ruben, Kwa Jenga, and Mukuru main slum, which is Kayaba, Kwa Tanyayo, Songabele, Masai, and uh, St. Catherine's. Those areas, all those people work in industrial area. Now 70% of the businesses in industrial area are slowed down. A lot of factories are closed, and they've laid off the people, especially all the casual workers. So they've laid off all the people, and then Imaradaima is a big estate, so the women used to go and work in Imaradaima. Now people from government are at home, they are not working also. So those people don't need maids to work for them. They are doing their own clothes, washing and everything themselves. So the maids have lost the Husband and wife have both lost jobs. So children have nothing to eat. Take a family of five people that we sometimes get in a slum. They haven't eaten for up to two, three days. So when we go there, we make them very, very happy. I am keen to know whether he has encountered any challenges. And as it turns out, he surely has. A little bit of challenge that we face is with um, some machineries of uh, government. But the COVID relief task force is absolutely fantastic. They are working very well with us. The Kenya police are fantastic. They are giving us a lot of support. The government in general is giving us a lot of support. Once or twice we encounter some chiefs who are difficult, but we manage them. The businessman who would have been guiding tourists around the beautiful land of Kenya or conducting his safari rallies instead shares with us about poverty eradication methods as he has come to observe and conclude through his vast experience in Kenya's demographics. We have to take people back to the rural areas and make life better for them there so that we remove a lot of people from the slums in Nairobi. We start big um, uh, farming uh, uh, initiatives so that people don't have to live in Nairobi, they can live there in the, in the uh, um, rural areas where they'll be able to get uh, self-dependency. Our people have to also be taught a lot of vocation. Government has to start cleaning up the slum areas and 
put uh, good initiatives of slum eradication programs where people get a better place to live in, where there's sanitization, water and solar electricity supply. Um, and it, it, like every government in Africa, we have a population boom, so we are suffering with all of that. But over time, I'm sure with the new uh, younger people in government, they are going to help, they are going to do that. You see a lot of changes already, a lot of people have cars uh, the same way. Over the next 10 years, I know that Kenya will change drastically and move itself up to a much better level. As a way of adding value to the country's economy, Pancard uses the donations made to purchase produce and all the relevant materials locally. When we get donations, we buy them from Kenyan farmers and Kenyan producers. We, except for things like nappies and stuff, um, which may be imported, but these ones are all locally made. Um, we don't do any. We don't do any products which are imported, and they might have a shelf life which is expiring. We give produce which has got must, a minimum of six months of shelf life, and we try to procure everything from Kenya because um, we want the Kenyan industry to do well. So even masks we are making, we are, you see my mask is saying Kenya. All of us, our masks are saying Kenya, we do everything locally. His right-hand man, Mr. Vikal Shah, a.k.a. Junior, armed with tools and experiential knowledge, takes pride in his crucial role as a key man in Team Pankaj. Uh, I'm basically the logistics uh, person here. Uh, I send out the goods uh, out and in. I receive the goods coming in and sending out. Uh, we have a team, uh, well, so far we've got Melissa here behind me. Uh, she's the one who does the whole, the plan for every day, sending uh, which truck to, I mean, where the, the goods are going out, the food hampers. And then I've got, we've got five trucks which have been donated by well-wishers. We use the five trucks to send, it out, uh, send out the goods. Every day we send about 1,000 to 1,500 hampers a day. Because, uh, I noticed that this charity organization calls for total dedication as Junior takes me through his daily schedule in regards to the operation. My day starts very early in the morning. At uh, 6 o'clock I go to the slums with, uh, with Mr. Pankaj. We see how, how it's there, how is the situation. And then we come here by 8, by 8, uh, 8.30 the trucks leave. Because the trucks are already loaded a, a day before. So 8.30 they'll go, they come back. And then if they've got any more deliveries, we'll send it out in the afternoon. And uh, we finish here by 5.36. And then at times we are here till 7 as well, just sorting out some other logistics. Because at times we have issues with uh, the place where it's supposed to go, the roads are very narrow, so it, it's very, it makes it difficult for the trucks to go uh, to the right place. As Pankaj thanks all on the list of his mission and his future plans, he is also asking everyone with a goodwill to support the program in whichever way possible. The main people I'd like to thank once again is all the donors, and I'd like to thank God Almighty and our beloved President Uhuru for bearing with us, for allowing us to do what we want to do, and for allowing us to help the people of Kenya. Um, his office is giving us immense support. Uh, all the ministers, are, the uh, cabinet secretaries are giving us good support, especially Mr. Matiangi, Mr. Kagwe, and um, uh, Ambassador Amina. They are giving us very good support, and we are going ahead. What I'd like to tell all the Kenyans right now is to come out come out of uh, their homes, those who, are able, who still have a job, bankers, lawyers, everybody who still has a job, to please come forward. Just give us 1,500 shillings uh, to Tim Pankaj and we'll feed a family of four people in 24 hours of their giving us this money. They can send it to our pay bill. Our pay bill number is 5074087. And what I'd like everybody to come out is to rescue every Kenyan in the slum over the COVID era and then they should, we should all work together to cut out any corruption that we have. We should all come out and bring a new Kenya into this world so that we become the best country in Africa. Carve your name on hearts, not on tombstones. A legacy is etched into the minds of others and the stories they share about you. Pankaj Shah clearly mastered the art of giving 
not because he has so much to give, but because he knows the beauty of sharing the little that he has.